I think that's something that we've we've seen over years, um, not in my, also, also in myeloid leukemia or in MDS, that with the improvements in conditioning regimens um, and with more use of reduced intensity conditioning, um, alternate donor sites, advances in graft-versus-host disease prophylaxis, then more and more patients become eligible for transplant. Um, and that's something that is certainly also the case in myelofibrosis. One of the interesting developments in myelofibrosis is the use of ruxolitinib, um, also um, as a standard of care in patients who have higher risk myelofibrosis who don't go on to, um, to transplant, but in, in that case as a symptom um, relieving um, aspect, um, but also like for, for transplant patients in terms of potentially shrinkage of uh, spleen size, uh, which uh, is a, a redevelopment outcome. A change in the immunomodulatory aspect of JAK inhibitors can also be uh, very uh, helpful for, uh, for transplant patients. However, there's still a lot of uh, work necessary to really um, identify the best use of ruxolitinib in the in a transplant period, if we should um, do this prior to transplant, in a post-transplant period, p- directly at the time of transplant, um, because it does have side effects. Um, it can be myelosuppressive. And um, so there's still work to be done, but those are kind of the uh, interesting developments in, in the field.